Right, welcome to Tactics, a showcase video for Imperial Knights. Uh, in this episode, we're going to take a look, look at the Armaga class Imperial Knights. That's the smaller ones that you can get. Uh, we'll take a look at them. Uh, take a look at the model here. I've had these painted up on commission. Then we'll take a look at the rules uh, and then tactics you can use, how to get the best out of this unit. So I've had these two painted up here. Uh, his name was, it went under the name of Lego Fingers. It's now Grey Fox Studios. Uh, he's painted these two up and uh, it's House Terran to match up the Imperial Knight they already have uh, painted up on commission uh, from Grey Fox Studios. So it's an exciting project looking to get this Imperial Knight army up and running and really uh, there's about six models in the list so this is sort of the halfway stage already uh, for this 2000 points Imperial Knight army. And House Terran always been my favourite colour scheme uh, so that's what I've gone for uh, for this list. So I uh, these two I got from the Forge Bane set. Uh, you get the Armaga class uh, Imperial Knights in with them. Uh, so we'll just push the Knight Paladin out of the way. There's already a previous tactical video or tactical video about uh, that unit uh, already up and available on the channel. But these two here, uh, I hope to use them as a pair. I think they work better in twos and threes, not isolated on their own. And it seems to be a good unit to support the bigger knights. I think that's kind of the, the fluff and the idea behind them. Uh, so I think tactically that's how I plan to use them as well. All right, so what we'll do now is uh, we'll zoom in, take a closer look at the models first of all, just to see the, the work that's been done. So here's the first one. Gone for slight variations of the uh, heads here, so they're both different. But uh, as I mentioned at the start, check out Grey Fox Studios. Uh, Instagram is a great place to see the work that he does. Uh, he has like, nice visual uh, social media there that you can uh, get an idea of the different commissions that are going on. Uh, and then you can get in contact with him there as well. But uh, that's just showing you the quality to expect. Very really happy with how these have come out. And it's nice now for Imperial Knights, it's a good variety going on. It's not just the, the standard Imperial Knight kit. Uh, Games Workshop have uh, broadened the different options now that are available, which is great. So I got him to do the same basing as on the Knight Paladin, just to link the whole army together. That's that one. And then I, I constructed these and sent them to him previously, uh, and magnetised the torsos. So I'm able to rotate them in different angles, which is great. So that's that one. And then this one here, and some of the arms are still loose as well. I love the ability to be able to move these around. So uh, he's done the transfers here, he's, that's good. Look, he's numbered them here for me, number one. And then uh, number two here as well. So nicely marked out. Yeah, and he's done it here as well. This one has three, and then two on that one. Getting all the heraldry on those. I'm just showing you the detail there at the back. So there they are. Uh, really, good. now you can collect an Imperial Knights army, uh, and it's not just the Imperial Knight kit. There's a nice variety now to choose from. As we'll, we'll check out in the rules, there's there's two Armaga class types here. Uh, there's uh, the Warglaves here, and there's the Helverian as well. So there's two types that you can use. Uh, quite different from each other, so we'll, we'll check them out in the rules. But yeah, that's the work done there by uh, Grey Fox Studios. Check them out on Instagram. Uh, I'll put a link in the description of the video below. That's the the work done by him. So there they are. Uh, what's next? Well, we'll just have to <laughs> we'll have to see. But hope to keep this project rolling here and uh, get this Imperial Knights army running and try and get to 2,000 points pretty quick. Be great to all of a sudden have uh, another powerful faction. On the channel, so real nice them with their nice new codex. So I, I just to mention I have an Imperial Knight. It's painted up uh, here in the House Raven colour scheme, and it's Graven Ferris Maximus. But uh, if you like the way that one's come out, there is uh, an in-depth painting tutorial for how to paint Imperial Knights for House Raven. It's this red colour scheme here, and that's on the Plus channel, so you can check that out uh, just there. And then on the Plus channel, there's the Army Development video for the Imperial Knights to propose the list, so you can see it there first. 
uh, and then plus all the other exclusive content and battle reports as well but we'll just have a look I mean look at that for this is quite nice house Terran and then a uh, Sir Hector as well Canis Rex it's quite a nice touch to add in a free blade there as well okay so two Armiga class knights here so Armiga Helverin, that's the, the shooty one, which has got an absolutely deadly weapon here, the Armiga Auto Cannon. Uh, so these have the power level nine, the 12 wounds. So you're going to be into a damage bracket here. Uh, so 14 inch move is very pro walker. It's extremely quick. You're looking at over double the speed of a dreadnought. So these things are, are very very fast on the battlefield. 12 inch move is, is exceptionally quick. Plus if you make an advanced move, uh, you're looking at potential of an 18 inch move from these so they are very very quick uh, weapon skill and ballistic skill 3 plus and then as the damage goes down uh, 4 to 6 wounds remaining it's movement 10 which is still very very fast 4 plus weapon skill and ballistic skill and then they really start to struggle when they're on 1 to 3 wounds still fast though 7 inch move but it's 5 plus weapon skill and ballistic skill uh, strength 6 tough as 7 so they're as tough as a tank they've got 12 wounds they've got the same if not slightly more wounds than your average tank as well. Four attacks which is a good base uh, number of attacks, leadership eight and then a three plus save so they're tough enough it's like taking a tank uh, for these oh my god Helverin starting at 170 points for the Helverin here so a uh, these units here, it's not just singles, you can go for an additional uh, Helverin here as well, or two more. So you can have a unit of three of them as, as one choice uh, here. They're armed with two Armiga auto cans and a heavy stubber. Your only option really for this option, I, I do plan to have at least one of these in the, in the new list, uh, is to swap the stubber for a melter gun. Um, for this configuration, and for the cost of points, the, the Helver in here, this is the one that holds back and gives long range fire support. It's a 60 inch range for the auto cannon. That means that you're probably not going to be needing the melter gun, which is 12 inch range. You're probably going to be holding right back. So that's kind of making the melter gun redundant. So I would probably just keep the heavy stubber. That's going to save you some points. Uh, so melter gun 17. Heavy stubbers four, so you know, save yourself a few points there. I'll probably configure it so I have the stubbers uh, on the hell variant and just rely upon the main, the main auto cannon firepower. So you're looking at 174 points then, which is it's not too bad. Cover the weapons in just a moment. You do have the iron shield, same as the Imperial Knight, five plus invon save. So one third of the damage that's coming through, it's not uh, mortal wounds. You're going to block that with that invon save. That is very very useful. Uh, it does explode at uh, 6 inches D3 mortal wounds, it blows up on a 6, and then you can do a squadron. So if you've got multiple models in the unit, you have to set them up within 6 inches of, six inches of each other, and then from then on, the rest of the game they count as a separate unit. So the auto can it all revolves around the Armiga auto can. I, I think it's a crazy weapon. It's one Armiga auto cannon. It's heavy 2d3. So one of those auto cannons is going to give you between two and six shots. But this comes with two. Zero points. You're not paying any extra for these. See, so you're looking at between four and twelve shots. There's a blistering amount of firepower. It comes in at strength seven, AP minus one, and this is the the deadly one here. Uh, it's three damage, it's straight three damage. Regular auto cannons, two damage, is three damage. So you're going to cause a lot of trouble for vehicles and monsters and so on uh, with those auto cannons. Absolutely deadly. So uh, it's excellent fire support from long range. Uh, and then, you know, if you've got Imperial Knights, you, you, the opponent's going to be going after your big stuff. Uh, Imperial Knights are closing in getting too close for, for close combat and so on. So the likelihood is that the Helverin, if you position it well, can just be out of the way and just giving firepower from long range 
and not getting too involved and the opponent's being distracted by other targets and for as long as that stays alive and it's chucking out those shots every turn it's going to cause a lot of trouble uh, ignore the penalty of hit rolls moving and firing this heavy weapon so on the move as well uh, there's no minus for your shooting so I, I think these are an excellent option and if you've had experience of using these then by all means leave it in the comments section below how many you're taking a unit uh, any tactics involved stratagems and so on uh, you, even your list that you use and how these support that list and the overall game plan that you have for your list but it, in my opinion I, I haven't got the model yet but these seem a very viable option indeed an excellent supporting unit uh, for Imperial Knights and sort of House Terran sort of, I'm going to make quite an aggressive army that's going to advance and get stuck in at close range of firepower and close combat and so a nice bit of uh, fire support going in for the kill uh, should be uh, this unit here should be able to fulfill that role very well. So I think at this stage it would be wise to roll up some, some dice just as we cover finish covering the Helverin here. Um, I don't have the model but I'm going to roll up theoretically uh, what you can expect. So we'll say our target is the, the Rhino, so we a standard vehicle, see what kind of damage we can do. I, had, I, I would estimate on a good round of shooting, a very good round of shooting, to destroy the vehicle but you're looking just to put some damage on it is the kind of idea. Uh, so 2d3 shots, 4d3 shots because it comes with two of them. So that's two, four, six, seven shots. Pretty impressive really. Uh, and we'll just go for the, the raw firepower, no bonuses and so on. So threes for hits, fours for wounds. Yep. And then uh, four plus saves though. Yeah, saved a couple. So the AP minus is a bit of a downer, uh, but still, once the damage gets through, uh, three wounds caused there against the Rhino. Again, I'd imagine a, a pair of these would be pretty good working together. But anyway, uh, five, six, again, seven seems to be the average number of shots. Threes for hits. Fours for wounds. Potential trouble here for the Rhino. Yeah, and all of a sudden, that's nine that damage coming through. Almost destroyed uh, the vehicle there. So, so it's dependent really on the opponent's armor saves. If they roll well, they'll be okay. We'll do another one. Just for the AP, this, this is the number of shots here. That's just five shots. Nice below average here. Not so good. And a wound. Not safe. Still three damage coming through from that one. And then we'll do one more round here. Again, not so good. My D3 rolling's <laughs> terrible. Threes. I have to do another round after this. Two wounds come through and no safe. Six damage all of a sudden. Still, that's a poor round. Still, uh, it's five, seven again. Seven seems to be your average. That's what I'm getting here. Threes. Fours and some saves. Whoa, saved all. Illustrating there the fact that you're, you're only minus one for the armor, so your opponent's going to get a fair chance of getting some decent saves. But that's the nature of altar cans. Never really been that deadly as far as the AP is concerned. But illustrating there, pretty good supportive fire. But for it to be effective, you see you're going to need multiple turns to, to build up that fire power. I don't think you're going to be blind targets off the off the board but decent enough supporting firepower. So the idea is to keep that Helverian alive for as long as possible. So position it well, try to avoid being ambushed, and then stay out of trouble, stay out of range, and just support the main attack going in, and then just contribute those that damage coming for each turn, I think seems to be uh, the best option. So next is the, the War Glaive. So that's, that gives you your firepower, uh, but also more of a close combat, close support kind of role as well. So that's the two that I have. And again, as I mentioned earlier, my House Terran list, I'm gonna play it quite aggressive. It's gonna go on the attack, it's trying to go on the attack to, to purge the enemies of the Emperor. Uh, and then not just a display of firepower, but just this firepower on the go, closing down the range and then plunging into close combat. I think it's a, a much scarier way to play Imperial Knights. So these should fit that. Uh, overall tactic quite well. Again, it's power level 9. These start off cheaper. At, uh, they're 160 points to start off with. 
you've got the heavy stubborn melter option if you have the points I would take the melter in this instance it pairs up very very nicely uh, with the thermal spear similar kind of type weapon so an extra melter shot in there very very useful indeed uh, that shot could be the difference between destroying or not destroying a target so highly recommend taking the melter gun and then uh, the reaper chain cleaver yeah is zero points uh, and then the thermal spear is zero points as well it's 160 and 17 that's uh, 177 points you're looking at yeah so all the same rules still keep your five plus in fun still keep the same speed and the same number of attacks as well so you got your melter gun, that's range 12, strength 8, minus 4 and d6 damage and if you get to in half range, which is 6 inches for this weapon then you run 2 dice, discarding the lowest for damage, nice reliable solid damage coming through the thermal spear is similar, but it's uh, range 30 so you have a very good range uh, for the type of weapon and then you get into in 15 inches, you get your 2d6 uh, discarding the lowest for your damage result and then it's not just a one shot weapon, it's Assault D3, so an average of two shots coming from this thing, and again strength 8, minus 4 and D6 damage so this is a nasty weapon, it does have the power to pop a vehicle in one round of firepower, and again with that melter gun supporting much higher chance doing that then if you do get into close combat you have the Reaper Chain Cleaver so you choose one of the profiles, you can go for Strike which is times two strengths, so you're fighting at strength 12, minus 3 and 3 damage which is excellent, so I can imagine these things, uh, firepower going in towards vehicles and then charging in to finish them off, no problem at all, that will uh, cause trouble for any vehicle, even threes to, to wound, you know, land raiders and anything like that. And then if you do get in close combat against uh, infantry, you can sweep attack, which is strength user, which is strength six, AP minus two, one damage, but you get two attacks, or two hit rolls for each attack with this weapon. So you'll get eight attacks if you get bogged down against infantry. The only downside I can see from these is them getting bogged down in close combat or uh, if they are charged, they, they don't have the fly keyword so, and they don't have the, the special rules for uh, the super heavy walker we're able to move out or move, walk across units or pull out a combat and charge something else. So once these get locked in combat, so you may have an enemy unit that charges them deliberately on their turn and then you either stay and fight that unit or if you pull out you're not going to be able to charge and you're not going to be able to shoot so that's the downside, you've got to be selective and got to be careful about how these are used because they can be bogged down and, and tactically the opponent can try and uh, stop them from charging the targets they want to and, and shooting as well by charging them uh, with units so hordes potentially could nullify these if you're not careful. So that's the, one of the downsides, one of the things to be aware of. So, and uh, other than that, solid enough. You know, there's an invite save there, 12 wounds, free up save, decent and close combat, deadly firepower. So again, the Warglaive, excellent supporting unit for medium and close range. I think these are excellent. Just mentioned a few stratagems. Uh, and again, check the comment section below. Other Imperial Knight players uh, will uh, be leaving comments there and you can see the kind of tactics that can be used. Pack Hunters is one, it's one command point uh, for Armiger. Warglaives, uh, when one of them's charged, until the end of the phase, you can read off our charge rolls for friendly uh, other household Armiger Warglaives whilst within 12 inches of that model. So again, hunting in packs, Pack Hunters as it says here. So I anticipate probably not splitting these up. I think these two would be more deadly working as a pair, the two of them working together, uh, shooting at targets, charging, and then especially sort of in a supporting role of a knight. So the knight's closing down uh, the range and then you've got these two in support. They'll keep up, they're faster than the knight, so keeping up is not going to be a problem. There's other uh, stratagems here. Sky Reaper Protocols, excellent one here for the Helvarian. Use it in your shooting phase from your army if it makes its attacks against an enemy unit that can fly. It doesn't have to be a flyer, it can any unit that flies. To the end of the phase, you can be off out hit rolls to the armor, get Hellbrands, auto cannons. That's only one command point, so that one's useful for sure. 
And then there's some others here. Glory and Honor's a great one for your command points. Use a stratagem after a house Terran. That's for the, uh, this household here. You get to fight again. It does cost a bit, but that one's great. And then there's Bonded Oathsman here as well. Use a stratagem at the end of the enemy charge phase. Choose a household Questorius class or Dominus class unit for your army that has been charged this turn. So your, your, your big knight's been charged. All friendly household Armiga class units within six of that unit can immediately perform a heroic intervention as if they were characters. Each can move up to six inches when doing so. Must end its move closer than your enemy unit. I mean, that's great. Really cool. Stratagem to play. It's only one command point. So you get charged by something, these can go in and support and defend in close combat. I think that's a very, very good one. Uh, that one just there. So there's some great ones around. Yeah, there's Sally Forth as well, Armiga class units as well. You can outflank, place them on the battlefield, they turn up um, in six inches of the battlefield edge and more than nine inches from any models. So that one's pretty cool as well. So some great flexibility. Some great enhancements there uh, with the stratagems for the Imperial Knights. So, I encourage in the comment section, leave your combinations that you go for. So, uh, units, which choice, size, loadout, and then your household and stratagems that you use, you know, that combination that builds up to make something that's quite potent. And then it'll be interesting to see uh, what different combinations are out there. So, We'll just roll up here. We'll do the thermal spear and then this close combat ability as well. So say you've closed in uh, here. I'm gonna go and try and kill a vehicle. This is the aim here. And I've gone for the, the melter option. High likely gonna go for that. So the melter shot, probably gonna miss, yeah. <laughs> I just predicted that would happen. D3 shots of the thermal spear. Three shots of that though. Threes to hit. Terrible dice roll here. Uh, we do get the wound, it goes straight through the armour, and then because of the range, we discard the one. Six damage straight away. Then we'll say we charge in. Uh, four attacks. We'll go, obviously, for uh, the strike ability here. Threes to hit. Threes to wound. One gets through. Six up save. No. And that is three damage, so just one wound left. So you've made, haven't destroyed the target, it's a pretty poor round, but I've wrecked that vehicle. There's friend, there we go. It's a great, great supporting unit. Yeah, and that might be its role, uh, taking out lower priority targets like rhinos, and razorbacks, and sort of more minor targets, and then the big knights deal with uh, other targets but support but killing targets that need to be destroyed nonetheless. Uh, Melter shot, this is just going to miss here. Oh, got a hit. Three to wound. No. Okay, <laughs> so a complete waste. D3, two. Threes to hit, yeah. Uh, threes to wound, yes. Uh, the first 2d6 will choose the six and then the last one will choose the two. So that's eight wounds. We'll charge in, need to pick up two wounds here to destroy the target. Threes to hit, threes to wound. This is uh, two saves to six plus. Gone. All right, it's target destroyed. Nice. We'll do one more. If you come up against a big target, then if you've got two of these, you charge them in, you know, combine them all together, plus their firepower. Uh, we'll see if he can redeem himself here. So, melt again. Yep. No wound again. Might come on, reroll that. D3 shots, two shots, threes, threes again, excellent. First one, we'll choose the five, and the last one, we'll choose the six. Eleven wounds, target destroyed, nice. Uh, remember that great thing in 8th edition as well, you can fire at one target and charge something else, uh, so it's a great option as well, now that you don't have to uh, fire at the same target, uh, charge at the same target, charge and so on, it's a lot more flexible now in 8th edition, so these things, Firing and charging, you're getting the most out of them. You're getting two phases, potentially, where you're causing damage with them. And then in return, three plus save, 12 wounds, five up in one save. Uh, they're tough enough as well. So all in all, I think as a supporting unit, and don't, I wouldn't expect any more from them, but just to support the other large units, I think the Armaga class Pyronites are excellent. But maybe you, maybe you disagree, <laughs> maybe you think they're no good. By all means, share that in the comments section. Uh, below. There it is, that's the tactics then and showcase. 
uh, for the Armbruger class in Pure Night. So I said I do plan to get the Hell variant to add that into the list, uh, plus the other models I'm planning uh, to get done. But the aim is to get to 2,000 points, uh, and then, as I mentioned at the start, getting these paints up on commission. So check out Grey Fox Studios, see the work uh, they do, and then by all means you can get in contact with them uh, for your own painting commission work as well. But there it is, Armica Class Imperial Knights Tactics and Showcase. Thanks for watching, and tune in next time.